There are two types of cameras in this world, the type you own because they get the job done and the type you own because they inspire you to be creative. In the first category, we have cameras like the one I'm recording this video with. It's the Panasonic S1H. This camera was purely a business decision purchase. It is one of the most powerful mirrorless video cameras in existence. And I bought it for two reasons. One, to capture video at the design conferences that I run, and two, for these YouTube videos. Most of the time it sits there on that tripod and it's just ready to go. Um, I just have to hit the button. It's dialed in perfectly so I don't have to think very hard about the setup and I don't have to do any post work. I use the footage straight out of camera. It's absolutely amazing for what it does. It saves me time, it's extremely utilitarian, and there's nothing particularly exciting or inspiring about it at all. To me, it's plain and simply just a tool. But then we have the second type of camera. These are cameras that may not make as much sense from a utilitarian standpoint. They might be quirky or hard to use. They may not meet you halfway in your photographic process. They might not even meet you a quarter of the way. They might have deep character or design flaws that cause you to have to think of creative work Rounds, or maybe not even allow you to get every shot that you would normally want to be able to get um, with a more practical but boring camera. But they are the cameras that get you excited to shoot. They're the cameras that connect you with the moment. They're the cameras that bring a smile to your face. And these are the cameras that I want to talk to you about today. This is my list of 10 favorite cameras of all time. I've chosen five film cameras and five digital cameras that bring a smile to my face and a skip to my stride. These are the cameras that help motivate me to be creative and remind me of those first feelings that I had when I first learned how wonderful the art of photography could be. Seven of these cameras I do own. I'm fortunate and blessed and lucky because they're wonderful and I get to own them. But the three remaining cameras, they're not quite in the budget range or pain tolerance, but maybe someday. But I have shot with all 10 of the of the cameras that I'm going to tell you about I, I felt like that was a requirement but we'll start with what we have let's talk about my five favorite film cameras first off coming in at number five is the instant con RF 70 shooting instant film is one of the most gratifying experiences um, of any photographic experience in my opinion no other process even the digital process gives you the sort of emotional connection that instant film process can Film cameras have the ability to connect you with the moment, certainly, but when you add to that the tangible experience of coming away with a print, it brings an element of play and joy that you just can't get any other way. I love instant photography for how it connects me with my oldest son, who is just getting into photography. It's fun for both of us, and we don't have to think too hard. We can just go out there and be creative together. The biggest constraint is the cost of the film, which causes us to think a little bit harder about how we're using the photos, um, but just enough. It's still fun though, and we don't take the process too seriously. But in most cases with, with instant film, like with Danae's, um, this is Danae's, this is the instant 300 wide, and with my son's Fuji um, Instax, the normal one, you have very little control over the settings. Professional or enthusiasts who want manual control have always been disappointed with the lack of options when it comes to um, having control over shutter speed, aperture, as well as having the ability to dial in the focus. That's where the instant calm are F70 comes in, it provides those options, and in so doing, it fills a void for enthusiasts in the instant film market, and it does so in a beautiful way. Uh, the design is very reminiscent of the Fuji GF670 folding medium format camera, which I also love, and which um, also made this list, almost made this list, but I've never actually shot with it. The Instant Con does have a fair amount of plastic in the build, um, but it's also got a lot of polish. And there are times when I'm holding it that I can't quite figure out if I'm holding a precision instrument for an advanced photographic enthusiast, or if, if it's just an expensive toy. And I, I think that there's that duality that I love about the camera. It's powerful, but by virtue of um, the platform, you can't take it too seriously and I absolutely love it. Next up, we have the adorable Roli 35s. I love these cameras, but they're tricky. Um, they're tiny. They have a, a beautiful Carl Zeiss 3.5. Some have a 2.8 lens, but they're they're tricky to work with because they're they're not a true rangefinder. They're zone focus, so you actually are going to have to select the zone. Or I guess you're focusing range here on the end of the lens, but they're nice because they, they have this folding lens pops out. Um, it's a very cool design, very tiny, very pocketable, 
And I just love these cameras because I can just stick one in any corner of luggage or backpack or whatever, and I never have a good excuse not to take a film camera with me wherever I go. I've always got one of these packed away when I'm traveling. As you can see, I love them so much that I've started a collection. There are several models and versions that they built through the years. This is the very first one, the Rolei 35, that was made in Germany. They eventually um, started making them in Singapore um, with more affordable parts, but both are excellent. These Germany ones are a little more rare and a little more expensive. Um, if you're looking at them just to shoot, I would encourage you to get the Singapore version. The 2.8 version of the Rolei S is nice. Um, because you get a little bit more low light. On the other hand, because it's zone focus, um, that depth of field can be really difficult and uh, it's hard to get, uh, get things nailed um, because of the distance and you're just estimating, you have no way to verify. I never even shoot at 2.8 though. This is my favorite, but mostly just because of the, the paint version, the black. Um, and then we've got some cheaper models that came later. But I really love these little roll eyes and they are among my favorite cameras of all time. My third favorite camera of film camera of all time is the Nikon FE2. Now I realize there are a lot of really great Nikon film cameras, but the FE2 appeals to me because so much of the focus of that line was on the manual process. At the time it was made, there were certainly more professional models, which came equipped with a lot more fanciness for sure. But um, I see the FE2 the same way I see the Fuji XT series when I compare them to something like the 5D series. It might be the rebellious little brother and and hanging out with him is for sure going to get you into trouble, but he's a lot more fun to hang out with. And that's how I feel about the FE2 line. I like this model so much that I do have the black and the, and the chrome version. Um, the black version makes me really happy because it's got a lot of this, you know, patina showing through um, this brassing. And um, I really like that look uh, with old film cameras. And they're just tanks, right? Even though this thing has seen so much use, um, it just it just keeps on taking photos. Um, I've put so many rolls through this one in particular, this black one. It just keeps on going. They feel great. The exposure indicators and bright viewfinder are excellent. Everything is where it should be when you shoot. And besides that, it just gives you access to all of those vintage um, Nikon lenses, which are some of my favorite vintage lenses ever and very affordable. My number two favorite camera is the Nikon 28 Ti. You can, you can see the smile on my face as I pick it up. Um, I have a thing for small cameras that are beautifully built. And this camera is absolutely that. The design of this camera is like nothing I've ever seen with the timepiece style indicators on top. Um, this camera is a prime example of inspiring, but maybe not the most practical. Obviously, these timepiece style indicators aren't the fastest way to present um, or read data. This is all about form over function, um, and it's for sure quirky. Like, for example, the placement of the lens. It would have worked better further to the the left than how far it is to the right so you have more room for your hand that's a, a flaw in the design i guess and um it's kind of weird also that you have to you have to if you focus and you want to know if you're focusing the right thing you have to look at the top to see if uh, the focus range um, why they didn't put that in the the viewfinder is less than ideal and uh, quirky for sure. And this is a perfect example of what I was saying before. It's quirky and it could absolutely be more efficient and streamlined as far as function. But when I shoot with this camera, I do so because it's just so fun to hold and use and it gets me excited to go out and shoot and make imagery. But those things aside, there is a lot to absolutely love about this camera, even from a functionality standpoint. One is that it's got a beautiful 28 um, millimeter 2.8 lens, which I much prefer over the boring 35 millimeter focal length that comes on most point and shoot style cameras. Two, in aperture priority, which is what I love to shoot with, but also P mode, has one of the most intelligent metering systems of any film camera ever. With film point and shoots, uh, getting the correct exposure is a big concern, but with this camera, it actually excels. Third, I love that it has um, a dedicated permanent flash toggle. Most film point and shoots start out with flash enabled by default, and you have to remember to switch it off each time you go out to shoot. That's um, applicable to like the Muse, the Olympus Epics. Fourth, it is quite pocketable. Here you see it compared to the X100F. Um, 
and its profile is smaller, so it's easier to get away with pocketing this. It's just right at the edge. Um, the X100F doesn't quite fit in most pockets. This one does. It's not quite as small as the Roli 38, but it is as wide. In fact, maybe even a little bit um, less wide. It's just a little bit longer, so totally pocketable, totally doable. And this stays in my pocket most days these days. And fifth and finally, I love the craftsmanship. It's made of titanium like watches. It was inspired by watches, obviously. And it's just gorgeous. The dials make me so happy. I just want to shoot more film so I can see those little uh, spinny dials move around and, and make me happy. <laughs> Finally, number one, fil favorite film camera of all time. Oh, I don't know why I'm looking around here. I don't have it. It is the Hasselblad X-Pen. Although most of the cameras on my list inspire me because of their physical characteristics um, and some of their quirks, um, this camera squarely inspires me because of the unique photos that can be created with it. The design of the camera, let's face it, looks like it was inspired by brutalism art. It's a brick, but it's a brick that works very well and takes incredible photos um, until it doesn't. And that's the one gotcha with this. It can be an expensive brick when it breaks, literally a brick. That's all it's good for, a doorstop. Um, and so, and because they're so expensive, I can't risk investing in them, unfortunately. But if someone named Fuji ever produced a re-release of this camera, or if someone else decided to redux it, I would be first in line. So keep that in mind, all you product designers. Make this camera which leads us right into my top five digital cameras of all time. And the fifth and fourth places for me, um, for my favorite digital cameras, it's actually relate directly to the Hasselblad X-Pen in an important way. But before I tell you what they are, I want to announce to you guys some online photo classes I've been working on designed for newer photographers. In the photography education space, you really have two types of um, workshops or online instruction. The first is how to use your camera. It teaches you how to shoot manually, how to get correct exposure and all the fancy features your camera has. And with the other, it's how to make art. But when I was learning, what I really wanted was someone to show me how to create amazing art with the actual camera that I was using. With that in mind, I'm going to be starting a course specifically designed for Fuji shooters. Um, I'll also do one on film photographers, probably, if there's enough interest. Um, so if that's for you, if that's something that you get excited about, I'm gonna offer a huge discount on these classes for the beta as we just roll it out. Um, and afterwards, we'll up the price. These workshops are live, interactive, and online with me and Danae, and should be a lot of fun. So if you're interested, be sure to sign up for more information by following the links in the video description. Now, as I've said, the fifth and fourth top digital cameras for me are related, um, and they relate to the X-Pan. And I can't decide which one I like more, but they have everything to do with my favorite film camera, the Hasselblad X-Pen. And that is the only reason why I love medium format cameras for that 65 to 24 panoramic crop, which absolutely inspires me. And of course, the two cameras I love for this are the Fuji GFX 50R, which I do own, and the one I don't currently own, the Hasselblad X1D. Two. Both of these cameras allow for that in-camera 65 to 24 panoramic crop. They both allow for an incredible amount of resolution coupled with a medium format lens um, to get that panoramic look but without any distortion. I find that being able to shoot in this format is extremely inspiring and I'm looking forward to the summer where I'll be able to shoot with both the 50R and the Hasselblad X1D2 quite a bit and decide which one I like once and for all. There are pros and cons for each of course, something that warrants its own video. But my favorite thing about the Hasselblad X1D2 is the grip and how wonderful it is to hold and shoot with. It's extremely different of camera design philosophy than the 50R, but it's a pleasure to use. From the outside, the GFX 50R, on the other hand, is just a big, not super interesting brick. However, I love those Fuji filmic profiles, and it's a better camera for adapting vintage lenses, as this system has built-in shutter rather than the X1D2, which has that leaf shutter, which necessitates using an electronic shutter if you adapt. Um, but anyway, more on that in future videos. Um, for now, those are my fifth and fourth place digital. My third favorite camera of all time um, for digital is the Leica Monochrome Type 246. We were able to shoot with that camera for only a few weeks and I loved every second of it. Having a camera with a sensor not encumbered with the color filter array allows for increased resolution and micro contrast that is possible to see without pixel peak being 
when you're shooting black and white. And beyond that, just having beautiful, well-crafted, well-designed camera, which restricts you to black and white, can absolutely unlock creativity by focusing the brain on the types of photos that will lend themselves to that style of shooting. If money were no object, I'd absolutely own that camera, or maybe even the newer M10 monochrome, but I have not yet had a chance to shoot with that one, so that's why I'm not focusing on it in this video but maybe someday. My one and two spots for favorite digital camera of all time will be slightly anticlimactic because it's a tie. I still can't decide which I like better between the two greatest cameras, in my opinion, ever created, and that is the Fuji X-Pro3 and the Fuji X100V. The X-Pro3 has that beautiful classic range style um, design and aesthetic. It loses the focus on the LCD screen and emphasizes the use of the viewfinder, and I absolutely love it. But the LCD is still there, for waist level shooting when you need it. I love the way the grip feels, especially with smaller Fuji primes. I absolutely love the plus and minus EV dial for the way that I shoot with riding the shutter and shooting an aperture priority. And while I did say that to make this list a camera does not necessarily have to be the top performing camera from a utilitarian standpoint, this camera is actually a high performing workhorse. When I shoot events, this is the camera I would have from a functionality standpoint. And it's just an added bonus that it's such a beautiful beautiful and fun to shoot with camera as well. See my full review on it to get deeper into the nitty gritty. But over here with the X100V, we have a similar rangefinder style, but with a different core shooting philosophy. This is a compact camera with a fixed 23F2 lens. It streamlines everything and it's probably the most gorgeous camera um, ever designed in my opinion. I get really excited to pick up this camera and shoot with it. I'm constantly trying to think of things that we can do as a family so I can get out and actually use it. And it makes for just an inspiring camera. But that's my list and those seven cameras that I mentioned, they sit on that wall there. And often when I'm here at home working, I work from home in this office. And sometimes when I'm plugging away, I'll glance over and see one of those begging to be handled and used. I often want nothing more than to close the computer and go out and shoot. And I think that's the one thing that people often miss who prioritize function over form. If photography is just a job for you and a means of making money and nothing more, then I get that. Stick with your Sony a7 III or your 5D Mark IV and get the job done with a camera designed to perform under professional photography circumstances. But if photography is more than a means to money to you, if your passion and interest in photography is as much about the process of capturing photos and the enjoyment of being in the moment at every step in the process, then consider function and performance, sure. But get the camera or the cameras that get you excited about being alive and being a photographer. And that doesn't mean that it has to be the latest and greatest either. I know many photographers, for instance, that are inspired by the original Leica monochrome or a Fuji X-Pro1, or a lot of other people keep telling me that for black and white, I need to try the Olympus Pen F in its um, mono profile too, which is on my list to try. Or speaking of Olympus, a lot of people really love shooting with the Olympus Epic Stylus or the Mu point and shoots. Whatever you choose, if it's out of enthusiasm for the journey, I think that's a beautiful thing. It's coming from people who found that little spark of inspiration from a very specific tool. But you do have to be careful. Um, you can go too far and prioritize camera acquisition over actually the act of taking photos and that is, that's not a great thing. But there are worse things than owning a lot of cameras. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. Again, if you're interested in our online courses that will be very interactive and walk you through the process of learning cameras, again, we're gonna do one on film and we're doing one on shooting with Fuji. If you're interested in that, I would encourage you to check it out in the link below. But for everyone else, and in the meantime, remember to do good with your camera and we will talk to you again real soon.